I'm gonna show you a few artifacts from my times with the greatest show on turf. Kurt Warner, myself, Ike, and Nas, and Ricky, and Marshall. We took the lead by storm. Some plays, man, I got some plays. Um, like I write Act 6, 8, 64. That was a nice play for us. I don't plaster my house with, hey, I played professional football, but this trophy, it means everything to me. And then the different rings, probably my least favorite ring is, uh, but it's a ring, the NFC Championship game. Um, uh, this is what happens when you lose the Super Bowl, you get one of these. This one here is one that's kind of special to me. 99, 2000 era with the greatest show on turf. You know, I remember back to this time and this period and these special players that I was with, and uh, it's something that, that means a lot to me. Of all your photos, you have a favorite? Oh, yeah, I, I would say uh, uh, right there. Yeah. yeah, how could that not be? We're both in tears. <laughs> We're both saying, I love you. <laughs> love you, coach. I love you, too. Thanks for the team. <laughs> Woo! You are special. That's special. Very, very special. is a pass-first league. And over the last decade, several offenses have left their mark by overwhelming defenses and rewriting record books. But none of those offenses were greater than the greatest show on turf. Water firing downfield. How's it close? Touchdown! What else can Marshall Falk do for this football team? It's a track meet. They don't need a football, they need a baton. It's the fastest football team I've ever seen. Hello to defensive coordinators, anything is possible. I have never, ever seen anything like this. It's unbelievable. This team officially a powerhouse, a juggernaut. From 1999 to 2001, St. Louis was the center of the football universe, thanks to an explosive offense that revolutionized the NFL. As the new millennium began, the greatest show on turf was on the verge of becoming a dynasty. But after winning only one Super Bowl title during that incredible three-year run, their potential went largely unfulfilled. The legacy of that incredible collection of skill, however, is undeniable. Like all superheroes, the greatest show on turf has an origin story, which began in 1997. 14 years ago, I left coaching because I had to, and I'm not embarrassed to say it. Today, I'm back because I have to. After seven seasons and one Super Bowl appearance with the Eagles, Dick Vermeil stepped away from coaching in 1983 due to burnout. 14 years later, a reinvigorated Vermeil went to work, rebuilding one of the worst teams of the 1990s. But the turnaround got off to a rocky start. After the Rams posted a 9-23 record in Vermeil's first two seasons. The first two years with Dick here were still very frustrating. I mean, 1998, the Rams were 4-12, and, and their offense was not just bad, it was boring. That's a bad combination. And from all indications, that 99 season may have been a make or break season. With a spot firmly on the hot seat, Dick Vermeil began building an offensive machine. The first step was handing over the controls to an unproven play caller. I met with him for eight hours in the interview down there, and Dick said, listen, what I've been doing here for the last two years isn't working. He loves the offense, and he had been calling plays most of his life, and it was going to be a hard thing for him to let go of. It was his first opportunity to be an offensive coordinator, and nobody, in my opinion, in the history of the league, came into an organization and made the contribution he made. 
In April of 1999, Vermeil made one of the greatest trades in league history and provided his new play caller with a Hall of Fame caliber chess piece. The Rams draft day running back arrived a few days early. Three-time Pro Bowler Marshall Falk delivered for the bargain price of a second and fifth round pick in Saturday's draft. I told my agent, listen man, I want good weather, I want to play on grass, I want to play on the team that's a winner. And I got the Rams. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Two days after acquiring Falk, Vermeil continued to add to the offensive arsenal. With the sixth pick in the draft, the St. Louis Rams select Torrey Holt, wide receiver, North Carolina State. The only thing missing was a quarterback, and the Rams head coach would stop at nothing to get his man. Trent Green is the guy, because he'd already been with Mike March at Washington. We gotta get him signed. I grew up in St. Louis, so there was a lot of things drawing me back during the free agency period that year. And so we end up going to this dinner downtown, and he's late. On my drive over there, I ran a red light and got run into and flipped my car over upside down. He crawls out the passenger side window, gets out, checks with the, the lady that had hit him. Finally, the lady says to him, what are we going to do about this quarterback situation? We're not going to have Tony Banks again, are we? And that's when it dawns on him that he's supposed to be at this dinner with me. Trent's sitting there, and he looks, and he looks, and I got flakes of glass stuck in the skin of my hand. Honestly, I got truth. I've got to play for this guy. I go, this guy just flipped his car on the way to dinner, and he walked down here to have dinner with us. I said, he really wants us to be here. We got him signed, and uh, not because I wrecked my car, damn near killed somebody, but... Uh, because he was so critical. This guy was the answer, and we're gonna really be a good football team. Phenomenal. Great touch on the ball, the anticipation. You know, if Mike was off talking or teaching, he can call the play because he knew the playbook so well. There was just so much confidence with Trent. We had our quarterback. Trent Green going deep, he's got a man touchdown. And a great throw from Green. It was the first time within my five years with the Rams that we were ahead of the defense. Once we got into a preseason game, things were clicking, and uh, I was excited. Trent Green comes in here, the real hope for this offense. He puts the Rams in the place to win. Green drops a great connection to number 18. Now we got Trent Green down. We've got Trent Green down in the middle of the field. Rams fans are holding their breath right now. It looks like a left knee for Trent Green. I just kind of put my hands on my face and I was like, I can't believe this. I was finally a starter. I had a coach that believed in me. I had all this talent around me and I was done for the year. It was a pretty devastating thing. Kurt Warner now warming up on the sideline. Green was a perfect 11 of 11 so far in this ball game with the touchdown pass. Kurt Warner, a capable backup, but certainly not where Trent Green is. You get emotional, you know, it hurts, but uh, that's, that's what this business is all about. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play good football. We weren't smarter than anybody else. We weren't any better coaches than anybody else. We just weren't afraid to try new things, basically, is what it comes down to. You throw conventional rules out the window when you're trying to defend St. Louis because they'll throw at any time. There's no normalcy to what they do. You better be able to adjust. You better be able to, to change things on the fly, because if not, it's going to be a long day. They're moving a lot. They're shifting a lot. When well, you change the strength of the offense two or three times in a shift, and half the time they can't get lined up right, it has to be a nightmare for the defense uh, trying to, to even locate who's in the game and then how to cover them when the ball's thrown by Warner. Reset! Goals left! Hey, I got him! And Mike Marks, the offensive coordinator, has all these shifts, motions. You don't know if you're coming or going out there on defense. I didn't see one of those formations this week. Hey, neither did I. 
So we kind of built on that. Hurt straight back to pass. Rolls right. Fires for Marshall. He's open. Got it. Five. Touchdown. Yes. Marshall Falk. Look at this matchup here. GD Ahanatu on Marshall Falk. Are you kidding me? We will come out on the first series first play with four wide receivers. Most teams would do that on third down every once in a while. And the Rams with the four wide receivers on. First down over the 35. Sends it out to Marshall Falk off the left side. What wide receiver there, wide receiver there, wide receiver here, a running back here, and they can all score. Oh yeah, you got tight ends too. But they haven't run the football yet. The Rams' pass first mentality was their trademark. From 1999 to 2001, no team completed more balls for more yards or more touchdowns. Most people ran the ball to open up the play action fake to throw it down the field. I think we were the exact opposite. 11 plays, 11 passes for the Rams, and here comes number 12. Into the end zone, touchdown! It's Marshall Falk! I just hope people see him for what he is because, you know, he was mad, he was crazy, you can't do that, that doesn't work. Well, guess what, everybody? It's the NFL you are watching today. Mike Martz was the creator of a revolutionary offense, but before the start of the 1999 season, his main concern was his quarterback, an unknown and undrafted 28-year-old named Kurt Warner. As a player, you always feel like there's something special inside of you. And my biggest quest was to get somebody else to think that same thing. We come out that first week, it was against Baltimore Ravens, and it was on. In Warner's first start, he threw for three touchdowns and over 300 yards. Warner dumps it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams! Throws the end zone. Touchdown, Rams! Torrey Holt, the rookie! I'm thinking like, damn, like, okay, like, this, 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 this is... <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I can get used to this, like... Only a few years removed from being a stalker at a grocery store, Kurt Warner was now bagging wins for the Rams. Warner became the first player in NFL history to throw three touchdown passes in each of his first three starts. In week four, the Rams played the 49ers, a team that had beaten St. Louis 17 times in a row. You know, we call it forfeiting wins. So we had forfeited a lot of wins. That team in Northern California was the king of that division. To even make any kind of noise, we had to dethrone them. I sat down and I talked with Isaac. He said, I want nothing more than to beat them. He said, man, in my brain, it's stuck. It is stained in my brain. Ken Norton picking off a pass and going and after scoring, punching the goalpost. Same old sorry ass man. So long. I hate it. I hate it. I want to get rid of this feeling. And um, he had one of the best games I've ever seen a wide out have. Isaac Bruce finished the game with four touchdown catches, including three in the first quarter. The St. Louis Rams got it going on. The word is Ike Bruce is down there actually in tears. He's so happy. We went out there and we bombed on San Fran. Not only did we beat them, we beat them down. And we wanted to beat them down because we wanted to send a message to them that there was a new there was some new boys in town in the NFC West. And it was the St. Louis Rams. I'm in the press conference, and Bill Walsh, who was one of my closest friends, comes into the press conference, he's a management of the 49ers, and tells the whole media, this is the Super Bowl team, this is the World Championship football team. I say, oh, Bill, what the hell did you do that for? The Rams went from 4-12 and 12 one season to 13-3 and three the next. It was the best record in the NFC. The offense that would change football had been born, and it appeared no one could slow it down. What an effort by Marshall Falk! These Rams are, you know, I think they're the real deal, and, you know, at some point you have to say that they're the best team in the NFC. On my cast, you believe, you believe in the Rams? You believe in the Rams now? 
I'd like to say what's up to the Canadians too. We'll try to run that table, baby. We're gonna try to run the table. The Rams had the offense of the future, but on New Year's Eve 1999, some were worried they wouldn't live long enough to see it. A computer storage issue known as the Y2K bug had the whole world on edge. And around the world, armies of employees won't be partying tonight. They'll be standing by in case that dreaded Y2K bug attacks. Oh, the Y2K? Nobody knew if all the electronics were supposed to stop, we were supposed to. It was supposed to be the end of the world in a sense. We weren't supposed to be able to go into 2000. <laughs> the bottom line is that most communities in America are not yet ready for Y2K. And we woke up and it was another day, and guess what we did? As we do, we played football. <laughs> As it turned out, there was plenty of RAM left in the computers and on the football field. But St. Louis would soon experience a glitch of their own during their first playoff game in St. Louis history. Well, I was coming off of a two season that was marred by hamstring injuries. And I just casually bend down and stretch my legs a little bit right before we go in for the final preparations and my hamstring pops. I pop the hamstring. So I just casually walk past the trainer, Jim Anderson. He's standing there. He's kind of seeing. I kind of gave him a little eye contact. And he's like, you know, what's, what's up, Ike? What's going on? So I don't answer him because I know what, what would have happened. You know, had I told Jim, he was going to go tell Jim, uh, Dick. That's a first for me. I never heard that. No. Not even now. You're, that's the first time I heard it. He heard his hamstring. And the very first play was designed to go to him. Yeah. I knew the first play of the game, because Marks had already told us the first play of the game what we're going to do. going to go slot to the left, and we're going to do run an action eight, 88 across the field. I knew that for a week and a half. We had practiced it every day up to that point. So, <sighs> you know, you pull it, you tweak it. Can you play? Should you play? Do you play? I mean, Isaac had not been in the playoff game in his career. There's no way he's missing his game. 10 for the 23. Warner back to throw. Looks over the middle. Throws deep. He's got Isaac Bruce in the 50. The 40. The 30. The 20. The 10. Touchdown. Rams. Yes, sir. 77 yards. First play of the game. And I promise you, as I sit here, that's the fastest I've ever run on the football field with a popped hamstring. As I'm running with him to the end zone, I saw no signs of someone that had hamstring issues. That's impressive. Thank goodness that he didn't tell me that because probably wouldn't have called it, you know? <laughs> Isaac Bruce's touchdown launched a playoff run that put the Rams in Super Bowl 34. Touchdown yes! Rams! Yes! Ricky Cross! Yes! The St. Louis Rams are Super Bowl bound. Okay. Let's show them how this game is played. Oh, Let's yeah. show them how this game is played. Home football so, today, baby. Right. Nothing yeah. else. There's more right talent here, right here. Right here, baby. More talent Doing right here than played in this game at any time. Right yeah. here. Yeah. Doing it. St. Louis knew they had the firepower, but after losing a 16-point lead with just over two minutes left in the game, Bruce would again play the role of the hero. Let's go, O. Couldn't ask for a better script. Let's go win it right now. One of the keys to St. Louis's first world championship was a Titans defensive scheme the Rams noticed earlier in the game. Did you see Isaac singled up over there on, on uh, Denard Walker? Single coverage. They're doubling everybody except Isaac, who's the furthest receiver. They're still giving us one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. So I said, okay, uh, when the time comes, we're gonna do this. At some point in time, the things that are built into our offense, we're going to get you. They made a mistake. They left a guy out there on Isaac Bruce one-on-one. -on -one. First and 10 from the 27. Warner back to throw. Rainbow's the far sideline, and it is caught by Isaac Bruce. And as the moment, when I catch the football, that's when, like, everything goes slow motion. I see everything and everybody in slow motion but no sound, I hear nothing. And they won't catch him today! Yes. Touchdown Rams! I'm just exhausted at that moment. I'm thinking the game is completely over. You know, where's the podium? I look at the clock, man, it's got another 154, so I had to sweat that out. 
for a team that had caught the NFL by surprise with their offense in 1999. It was now their defense that had to make the biggest play of the season. McNair looks left, looks right, rolls Take left, off. he could run. But somebody slow these mother down. <laughs> That's what's going through my mind. All right, guys, last play of the game. McNair drops, throws right side for Dyson. He dives for the end zone. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Time runs out. That's it. it. That's it. We won it. Woo he came up one yard short. That's it. Once I saw the wave from the sideline go to the field, I was like, it's over. St. Louis, the gateway to the West, is now the gateway to the best football team in the world. I could close my eyes and feel the confetti fall and standing up there with guys that, you know, four or five months ago, we were misfits. We had no idea what, what we were going to be. Hey, Kevin! You know? You're a world champion, buddy. Baby. You're a world champion. Unbelievable feeling. It, it, I get emotional. Excuse me, I, you know, I'm, I get emotional thinking about it right now. Congratulations. Oh, man. Oh, what a year. Love you, coach. I love you, too. Thanks for the team. <laughs> Woo. You are special. Woo. For it to all come together in one season at the highest level and to become world champions was the greatest football feeling that I've ever had. The Rams were the best team in football, but now, could they become a dynasty? All I want to say is we forget about the grocery store. Get about all that stuff and start thinking about a repeat. This, I love to look at this. This is my first contract. My first contract as a football coach. By God, they were going to pay me, let's see, what is it? Uh, $5,260 with $250 for coaching. <laughs> I'm serious, Del Mar High School. After leading one of the greatest single-season turnarounds in NFL history, Dick Vermeil stepped down as the Rams' head coach. His position was quickly filled by offensive coordinator Mike Martz. Once Coach Vermeil resigned, I think the only move fans wanted to see was Mike Martz becoming head coach. When somebody tells you that uh, you're expected to be world champions, uh, that's why you're here. That's why it's a great organization right now. That's why it's the best organization in the NFL right now, because the expectations are to be world champions again. For the 2000 season, the 2000 Rams had a new coach, but the show remained the same. Now he the open field with the line to midfield. He's at the 40, 30, down to 20, the 10, 5, touchdown on Zahir Akeem, an 80-yard catch. Our hot receiver was Oz Akeem in the flat, and you'll see him uh, he's going to break right in the flat right there. Quick throw. There's an unblocked player. And he makes that miss, and they're off to the races. It's probably my favorite play. In 2000, the Rams became the first NFL offense to gain over 7,000 yards in a season. They also scored 540 points, the most points scored by any team in Rams franchise history. We're better this year than we were last year. Offensively, we were just... We were tearing it up. You know, the expression been used by announcers for decades, aerial circus. This is an offensive circus. You know what? You sit back, you watch the Rams, no matter who they play, and they're hosting the Chargers today. Forget Ringling Brothers. The Rams are the greatest show on earth. Initially called the greatest show on earth, their nickname morphed a few weeks later when ESPN anchor Chris Berman called them the greatest show on turf. You know, you know, Berm, once Berm signs off on something, it sticks and it goes and it's stuck. Ain't nothing like hosting a party for the gray to show on earth. Or do they say turf? <laughs> Don't really matter. Oh, I mean, come one, come all. Come on to the big top. You won't believe what you see. This place is going crazy. You gotta love it. Well, it was a show you definitely wouldn't want to miss. It was some high flying acts. I mean, we threw the ball down the field. Unbelievable. Well done by number 80. Well, you know, the overall circus atmosphere, is there, there's a thrill in every ring. It's a three-ring circus. Bruce laterals it. And you might go, and for me, I love tigers. You know, you go and see the tiger, and you go, that's the best part 
of the circus. And for somebody else, it was the trapeze. And I think that was what was so cool about our team was that you could come watch our team and you could leave every time with a different highlight in your head. You know, a different moment where you say, man, that guy is the best part of that team. So explosive, so many weapons. And then you put it all together and it's like nothing you've ever seen before. This is spectacle, it's a, it's, a, it's a spectacle. The greatest show on turf was stacked with talent, but perhaps the offense's greatest asset was under their feet. All it was was semen and a piece of tarp that was just rolled over it. And the only thing separating the players from the concrete is about a half inch of rubber padding. The plays are lightning fast. The track speed is on. Speed. This Ram offense is something special, especially here on this field. I just didn't know how much my game and how I play was made for turf. It was just made for turf. Unlike grass, some of the cuts that you make, it's like cheating because you don't have to worry about your foot sliding from underneath you. Teams, they just, they hated it. The offense was predicated a lot on precision, and route running, change directions quickly. So that turf was perfect. The Rams' first six games of the 2000 season were all played on artificial turf. And the Rams started with a 6-0 record. But week eight in Kansas City put the greatest show on turf on natural grass. Warner drops the ball. Loose football, the Chiefs got it. Donnie Edwards picks it up, and now he is tackled. Kurt Warner has a broken finger. He is done for today. It's a shame that Kurt got hurt in the seventh game at Kansas City. That offense was mind-boggling. Through six games, it averaged 44 points. It was on pace, and keep in mind, this is not two or three games, it's 40% of the season. They were on pace for 698 points. They were on pace for more than 8,000 total yards and 6,000 passing yards. I really believe, had Kurt stayed healthy, that offense in 2000 would have obliterated just about every team offensive record for a single season on the books. During Warner's absence, Marshall Falk took over as the leader of the offense and went on to become league MVP. Touchdown Rams! Listen, do not be afraid of excellence. Yeah. And I always said it like, do not be afraid of success. Let's, let's go try to be great. Falk set an NFL record for the most yards from scrimmage and became the second player in NFL history to top 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving in the same season. Forget the big red S, Superman wears a two and eight on his chest. Any way we could get Marshall the ball, we got him the ball. I think there were times in the second half of the 2000 season when he put that team on his back. No better example than the season finale at New Orleans. In order to make the playoffs, the Rams needed a win and help from the Bears to beat the Lions. Marshall Falk took care of the first part. Touchdown, Marshall Falk! Marshall, uh, you had a terrific game today. Um, you took care of your business, but I know you guys were very concerned with what's going on in Detroit. Um, you know, we were, but we knew we had a tough game here. It was going to be a dog fight, and that's what it was. Let me just interrupt you, because we just learned the Bears won the ball game. Yes! New ball game now. Records don't matter now. Where we got to play, we ready to play. The Rams would face the Saints again. This time, the city of New Orleans brought in some extra help. Do you believe in voodoo? I don't. Yeah, I don't believe in voodoo. Do you believe in voodoo at all? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, yeah. I'm from New Orleans, man. It's, it's, it's a real thing. It is a real thing. Whatever your beliefs, something was haunting St. Louis early. Pulls it down, throws it upfield, yeah. intercepted by Knight! We had some freak things happen to us. Somebody ran a wrong route. Just some weird things happened, and they jumped out on us. Throws off his back foot, tip, intercepted by Holder. After facing a 31-7 deficit, the Rams battled back to within three points of the Saints, only to experience one last twist in a snake-bitten season. Hakeem drops the ball! Oh. Hakeem drops the ball! Brian Mill might have fallen out at the 10-yard line! you got to be kidding me. It is the New Orleans Saints! On the fumble, the buff by Hakeem. There is a god after all. 
St. Louis's Super Bowl title defense ended in New Orleans, and football fans were wondering if the NFL's greatest show had just been canceled. Dennis, here we are, the gateway to the West, St. Louis. What does it bring to mind? Well, you know, Al, when I think of St. Louis, I think of one thing and one thing only, the preeminent aerial circus in the world today. But you know what? We've been champions before. You know what? We're on our way back. We had some injuries. We let, we let 2,000 get away from us, but we're back. People would not miss a game. You could not get a ticket to a Rams game. Genius. I think so. I think they talk about this, the greatest show on turf. Not only the best offense in football now, but maybe the best offense ever in football. After starting 6-0 for the third straight year, the Rams' toughest test of 2001 may have come against a team that at the time had a 5-4 and four record and a young, unknown quarterback. Not a lot, man. Not a lot. Just ready for a big day today. The pressure goes down at the 35. The Patriots are not going to sit back and let the Ram offense take them apart. They were really well coached. They gave you a lot of different looks, a lot of things that you maybe had never seen before that you have to be ready for. Get deep to take away the end cut. End cut first. End cuts. In cuts, that's the game. Slants and in cuts, that's the game. Warner picked off. Terrell Buckley. Nobody's going to catch him. T Buck for the touchdown. Oh, what a great effort so far by the New England defense. Warner still managed to throw for three touchdowns against New England's stifling defense. With a seven-point lead late in the fourth quarter, Mike Martz's offense needed to convert a crucial third down to put the Patriots away for good. 60,000 on their feet. Here comes the blitz again. Four. Third down. There he is, right there. You've got to give Mike Martz an awful lot of credit because he creates this mismatch. He's got to feel what Bill Belichick is trying to do defensively and got exactly what he expected. And I believe this at the time, and I still do, it was the best football team I'd ever seen since I'd been in the league. And I felt like they were going to eventually be a Super Bowl team. After the hard-fought win in Foxborough, the Rams finished the regular season with a franchise record 14 wins. It also appeared that confidence was at an all-time high for the greatest show on turf. And Warner chased, grabbed, touchdown! How in the world? Oh, what a Marshall fall! I think the 2001 team was better than the 99 team. We were just scratching the surface in 99. The 2001 team, we embarrassed some teams. In 2001, there were no major injuries. And there was no voodoo. The Rams' offensive machine was at the peak of its powers. And another Lombardi trophy in St. Louis appeared inevitable. NFC Championship, we're back, the Rams are back. I think we just felt that there was some unfinished business. We felt that we were better than we performed the year before. You could definitely make an argument that the 0-1 team was the best of all of them. The St. Louis Rams are Super Bowl bound. For the second time in three years, the Rams are champions of the National Football Conference. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> With the Rams entering Super Bowl 36 as 14-point favorites, very few predicted an upset by the upstart Patriots. For three straight years, Jimmy Kimmel, our football prognosticator, has won the hearts of fans by having an uncanny ability to pick games, especially his legendary upset specials. My upsets have been so successful this year, I thought I might go at one more. Yes, I am taking the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, seriously. Sarcastic sign, just what I need. I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I'll see you next year.
they had no chance. They shouldn't have been on the field with us. We felt like we had an advantage. Um, we had been there. It was going to be a fun one. Tonight, a dynasty is born, baby. AIB. The last time we uh, flew were here, remember? It's on us, fellas. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I think the mindset was when we win the Super Bowl, are we a dynasty? You just kind of got the feeling like we were starting to read the headlines a little bit. We didn't play our best game. I think part of that was New England coming in with a great game plan. We were very much a timing oriented team. So they came out very early in that game and got physical with us. Do whatever you have to do to slow these guys down and keep doing it until the officials tell us we can. Despite the Patriots' physical game plan, the greatest show on turf still gained 427 yards of total offense, but managed to score only three points through the game's first three quarters. The Super Bowl of the Patriots is kind of an enigma. We were rolling. I mean, we moved the ball very well, but we had three turnovers. And against a good football team, you turn over three times. Those are three possessions, and they got all their points on those three turnovers. We shot ourselves in the foot. Water, big rush, unloads quickly, picked off. It's Ty Law racing down the sideline, and he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. This Patriot defense has this Ram offense a little shook up, don't they? No team has ever come from this far behind at this point and won a Super Bowl. Biggest regret I have in that game, I wanted to start that game in a two-minute drill because I just didn't feel that physically they could hold up. And I wish I had. As soon as we went through the two-minute drill, they fell apart. Went down and scored, boom, boom, 14 points, just like that. There has to be some urgency in this. Change the tempo because the Patriots have been controlling the tempo. Water, quarterback sneaks, walks into the end zone, touchdown Rams. Touchdown! Good drive. Now we go get another one. We got to show them why we're the number we one offense in the league. What a finish we have going on here. Warner stands in, fires, Ricky Paul wide open. Inside the 10, breaks it down. Yes! Touchdown, Ricky Paul! The Rams offense has come to life in the fourth quarter to tie it at 17 to 17. There has never been an overtime Super Bowl game. It ain't over till it's over, baby. Do you think now in hindsight, if that game would have went to overtime, you Yeah, no the question. There is no question. You can see it on the sideline. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that we weren't going to win that game. Let's go, D. They weak, man. They overrated. Tom Brady, overrated. The incredible three-year run of the greatest offense in league history came to an end as the NFL's greatest dynasty was born during Super Bowl 36. We had a chance to tackle the receiver and keep him in bounds, get enemy timeouts, and it's gonna go into overtime. And we let him get out of bounds, stop the clock. That was a critical error. And when I saw that, I, I got nervous and I got a lump in my throat. And now, Adam Vinatieri can be the hero for the Patriots. This field goal for Super Bowl 36. The kick is on the way and it is good. It's good. It's good. What a stunner here in Super Bowl 36. The Rams were 14 point favorites to win this football game. They beat us and hats off to them, but they was not a better football team than we were. And we didn't get it done, man. We just didn't get it done. The one game in my career that I've thought about more than any others was losing that Super Bowl and missing that opportunity. I think we all felt like we were gonna keep getting back here. So I don't think there was anybody that believed that was it. Much like their city's iconic monument, 
the steep rise of the greatest show on turf was matched with an equally rapid descent following their loss to the Patriots. Age, injury, and free agency all took their eventual toll. The Rams never returned to the Super Bowl and posted only one winning season in the following four years under Mike Martz. I felt like we had the makings of a team that could definitely get back, but I did not know how hard it was to get back to a Super Bowl after losing one. It was disappointing, of course, because the expectations were high. I still believe that that collection of talent and what we accomplish consistently as the greatest show on turf, that it's the best offense that the NFL has ever seen. And we ushered in a new era of football that everybody's playing now. You talk dynasties, and obviously we don't all play in the same era, but you can't call yourself the greatest show on turf and not be the greatest. It's, you're the greatest. The legacy of the NFL's greatest offense also lives on at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, thanks to the enshrinement of Marshall Falk and Orlando Pace. I love you. Welcome. So glad you Welcome. this with you, man. Welcome. Fittingly, in August of 2017, the ringmaster of the greatest show on turf entered into football immortality. You know, the spotlight in every blockbuster production always focuses on the main character or the QB in this case, bringing with it an unfair amount of credit. But oftentimes, it's a supporting cast that makes it the greatest show. All of you were the best part of my career, the part I miss more than any other. It was a privilege being your QB. Tonight, I share this honor with you.